the program we are launching today is meant uh, to be a direct response uh, to this crisis. And the program is titled Promoting Sustainable Tourism and Private Sector Engagement for Inclusive Community Development in Response to the COVID-19 Crisis. Uh, representing the Ministry today and also as a co-chair of the implement, National Implementation Plan uh, for this project, I wanted to just indicate that uh, this program is a partnership is funded by GSZ, a partnership between Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism, Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture, UNESCO, and other stakeholders. Without further ado, I now have the honor to invite Madam Elise Ashikutuva, Deputy Director in the Ministry of Environment, uh, Forestry and Tourism. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Elisa Sikutuva. I'm the Deputy Director of Tourism and Development in the Directorate of Tourism and Gaming, uh, Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism. It's indeed an honor and privilege for me to welcome you to this important occasion, which is the official launch of the GIZ and UNESCO project. And this project is on the sustainable, promoting sustainable tourism, private sector engagement for inclusivity, community development in response to the COVID-19 crisis. As we continue to revive the sector, the tourism sector, we need to strengthen the collaboration between our stakeholders both in the tourism sector and in the heritage sector, and also our development partner. Overall, the objective of this, of this project will lay a foundation of more strategic approach to promote sustainable tourism and heritage destination, while at the same time supporting the social and cultural cohesion of communities. This project will focus on three outputs. Number one, promote sustainable tourism approach at the world heritage destinations. Two, creation of short-term job opportunities for young graduates in the hospitality industry through the application of case for work. The scheme for cultural heritage safeguarding and maintenance of intervention in selected World Heritage uh, properties. Number three, to enhance training and capacity building of for tourist guides and also for craft making sectors which a focus on women through the development of micro accreditation skills. As reflected in our program that we have, we need to have a various stakeholders to share more information on promoting sustainable tourism engagement for inclusive community development. Let us stand together for our tourism sector to continue growing from strength to strength. With this I said, I would like to welcome you all for this significant launch of the GIS UNESCO project. I thank you. Honorable uh, Pahamba Shifeta, Minister of Environment, Forestry and Tourism. Uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister of Labor, Excellencies, valued guests. Uh, as I'm not a lecturer, I will be more brief, <laughs> although I enjoyed very much um, uh, the, the input before. Um, it's, uh, it's a great honor uh, for me uh, to speak today on behalf of GIZ, the German Development Corporation, which is, as it was mentioned already, is providing the funding for this important initiative. While currently uh, the COVID numbers are gladly going down, the devastating impacts of the pandemic, in particular in the tourism sector, are tragically very persevering. 
and will con continue to do so in the future. The local communities have been and are still depending, obviously, a lot on tourism for the livelihoods, and they suffer tremendously. That's why this UNESCO project is so important, and I'm sure it will make a positive change for local people and tourism in Namibia. As a GIZ uh, program I'm <coughs> representing, uh, Biodiversity Economy and Selected Landscapes in Namibia is also having um, a focus on nature-based tourism. Um, through this project, we actually support uh, activities, tourism activities, obviously, that are based directly on sustainable use and protection of biodiversity, thereby adding value to biodiversity and also incentives uh, for, for better protection. And I'm sure we will have with the uh, uh, um, UNESCO project a strong overlap. Uh, we, we work in four landscapes, Brandberg, Tosha West and South, and one the People Park and, and Waterberg. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to, to this cooperation. Um, COVID, unfortunately, is not the only, the only external crisis for tourism, but as we currently and also unfortunately regularly observe, there are other external crises. That's why we strongly believe that risk diversification is crucial to make um, tourism more and more resilient. And also, obviously, the income streams for local people. Diversification of income streams is key. Um, to this end, actually, we are running um, a lab of tomorrow, which is focusing on virtual tourism, which is then complementary, obviously, to the physical um, uh, tourism in, in the country. To, yeah, well, maybe not, not only to stand on one leg, but at least on, on two legs. Um, for this uh, level of tomorrow, companies um, and entrepreneurs from Namibia and around the world come here to, to develop innovative uh, products. Um, another reason, I believe, why um, complementary to the physical tourism, something like virtual tourism is crucial is because of climate change. Um, it was mentioned already that fuel prices are increasing. It's not only fuel cri uh, prices, but it's also, for instance, in Europe, um, tax on, on, uh, on CO2 emissions. So flying will become more expensive in the future. And well, at least that's an assumption on my side that maybe not everybody can, for instance, travel every year to Namibia, but only every second year. Um, so I think that's really something that um, also has to be looked at. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's possible in the framework of the UNESCO project, but generally I strongly believe that it has to be done because it is coming. It will come in the next few years. I think there's a big change, a big change ahead. So, the question is, what is the new response to this? I, I believe that needs needs a strategic discussion, not today, but but hopefully in the future. Yeah, I said I will be a little more brief, so I'm I'm at the end of my my input. So yeah, I wish uh, obviously um, UNESCO and MEFT and, and the Namibian government a successful project implementation, and of course also good cooperation with us. Thank you so much. I'll be providing a brief overview of the project, which will lay the foundation for further discussions today. And if you bear with me for one moment while I share my screen. The overall aim of the project is to address some of the immediate social economic impacts of the COVID-19 on tourism and heritage, to accelerate the recovery, to protect livelihoods, and transform the sector to become more inclusive and sustainable. The project will lay the foundation for a more strategic approach to promoting sustainable tourism at world heritage destinations while supporting the social and cultural cohesion of communities and implementing, and the project will be implemented in seven countries and world heritage properties. So in addition to Namibia, the project will be implemented in Kenya, Cambodia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Georgia. There are three main components to the project. The first is the promotion of sustainable tourism approaches at World Heritage Destinations and expanding the UNESCO Sustainable Travel Pledge. In 2019, UNESCO and the Expedia Group launched a partnership focused on promote, pr promoting sustainable tourism and heritage conservation through a sustainable travel pledge. The pledge takes an industry-first approach to environmental and cultural protection, requiring hotel operators to introduce firm measures to protect the environment and promote local culture. It is the first collaboration between UNESCO and a global online travel agency. 
The pilot phase of the project was launched in 2020 in Thailand in collaboration with the Tourism Authority of Thailand. And as we have expanded globally, close to 10,000 hotels have made commitments with companies such as Accor and Melia signing on. The second component focuses on creating short-term job opportunities for young unemployed hospitality workers through the application of a cash for work scheme for cultural heritage safeguarding and maintenance interventions in select world heritage properties. And the third component focuses on enhanced training and capacity building for tourist guides, guiding, and craft-making sectors with a particular focus on women through the development of micro-accreditation schemes. Training will be structured with a combination of online training courses and a blended learning course which will take place in the destination and assess. Both courses will provide micro-accreditation through a badging system. The online training will utilize the GIZ develop a TV platform. Each component will have a set of activities we'll have to, that will be implemented over the coming months. So for the promotion of sustainable tourism approaches at World Heritage Destination, the specific activities will be the development of a global website for the UNESCO Sustainable Travel Pledge, which has been which has recently been completed. The second one, the second um, activity is the organization of awareness and capacity building activities to strengthen management systems and promote new product development as commitments under the UNESCO Sustainable Travel Pledge. And third is to review and monitor commitments and compile best practice case studies. The activities associated with the third component are to create a, a cash for work scheme for cultural heritage safeguarding and maintenance intervention in select world heritage properties. The activities will be an assessment of existing site management, tourism and maintenance plans to identify needs and opportunities to establish mechanisms for the selection, contractual, and monitoring procedures for the participants for the cash for work activities, and finally, the implementation of pilot schemes against the clear time frame. For the enhanced capacity and training for tourist guiding and craft making sectors, the activities include a needs assessment to determine training needs and priorities, the establishment of a mechanism for the selection, contractual, and monitoring procedures for the participants, the development of training materials and applications to an established learning management system, and licensing and, and other. This is just a brief overview of the different aspects of the project. We very much look forward to working with you over the coming months to successful completion of this very timely and important project. So thank you very much for your attention. And again, I look forward to looking working with you. I'm saying this because I'm sorry, Honorable Minister, because sometimes in these sort of events, we used to call those who understand the issue. And we don't call actually those who need to understand and who need to be part of that. So actually, we are trying to convince those who are already convinced on the subject. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a diplomat and the head of office, but I'm also an activist for development in Africa. This is how the Africa we, we would like to have, bringing in those who have really the key stakeholders of the project to be here with us so that they understand why we are here and what we are talking about. But allow me to, of course, to read my official speech here, and I will cut some parts, by saying that it is, for me personally, a great pleasure and satisfaction to be here with you to witness the official launch of the project. And my dear representative GIZ, allow me to drop the GIZ and UNESCO because you know they are funding and they are part of the project because we want to build ownership. <laughs> By dropping those people, we're not thinking, oh, this is a GIZ UNESCO project, but rather talking about the the objective of the project, which is a project promoting sustainable tourism and private sector engagement for inclusive community. I was going to stress again community development in response to the COVID-19 crisis. Exactly one year ago, it was actually in April last year, 
I had the privilege to stand with you, Honorable Mohamed Shpeta, and also our sister, Honorable Anna Gipondoka, Minister of Education, Art and Culture, for the launch of the National Strategy on Sustainable Heritage Tourism Development and Employment Creation at community level. Let me again insist at the community level, which is for me very important. We have many key players, people who actually spend a lot of time, including Dr. Kavita, he mentioned that, who are part of the formulation of that strategy. Uh, and in fact, let me just mention that this strategy was initiated in 2019, when I just landed and took off my position. I was not expecting COVID <laughs> to, to have this impact. But I thought that there is a need for us to look at how indeed the value chain in tourism is including the community for employment creation, but also to ensure that indeed there is a connection with the heritage protection and preservation. So I'm so happy and proud of all of you, including my other brother uh, who is here as a director of ceremony. Today, this is a demonstration of our commitment to mobilize development partners to accompany Namibia in the translation of the national strategy into concrete intervention addressing the strategic priority identified in the strategic document. In the strategy document. We are delighted for this support from the German Federal Ministry of, uh, of Economic Cooperation um, and Development, BMZ, and GIZ to ensure an immediate response to issues raised by the impact of the COVID, such as UNDP, UNWTO, ILO, UNECA, the Economic Commission for Africa, joining us to support technical, uh, to provide technical expertise to various identified activities towards the implementation of the strategy. I'm glad and understand that now UNECA is supporting the ministry of tourism in, in the area of statistics, of course, to reinforce in the, uh, the, the statistics environment. This launch uh, came at, our, at an appropriate time when Namibia has launched the Namibia's Tourism Sector Recovery Plan, and when countries around the globe have lifted travel bans to enable the tourism to recover. Of course, as mentioned by the previous speakers, the core focus of this project is on private sector's engagement and community inclusiveness to promote sustainable tourism at heritage properties and support the social and cultural cohesion. As we all know, the private sector plays a, a crucial, and it was demonstrated here by Dr. Kavita, the private sector plays a crucial role in the tourism industry through promotion, employment creation, capacity building, and sustainable development. During the, COVID, the past two years, no country, as we know, as has been said here, has escaped the devastation of the COVID-19 pandemic or the impact or the effect of that pandemic on the tourism sector. At, amidst the pandemic, UNESCO introduced a regular tracking on the impact of COVID-19 on the visit of World Heritage properties, which revealed that nearly 90% of countries with World Heritage properties have had totally or partially closed them, with obvious social and economic consequences for the surrounding communities. Heritage properties are important today for travel destination and have great potential impact for local economic development and long-term sustainability if managed properly. This project serves, as, as I indicated, as UNESCO contribution and demonstration to this global effort as it addressed the need to, cut, to catalyze new measures and approach for sustainable tourism and heritage pro properties. Also, it's offered an opportunity to advance in digital transformation, capacity enhancements, both in service and product development, as well as identifying niches, market for tourism, virtual, and performing arts. 
In conclusion, we know the unpredictability of the pandemic. But in all crises, you know that this is where we have innovation. So the pandemic presents an opportunity for us to innovate and rethink the way we interact with the nature, with our heritage, the way we do business. This is a call for call to build back our tourism industry better and stronger, healthier, with better responsible and resilient relationship between sites, visitors, and local communities. UNESCO and its partners will continue to support the government of Namibia, the institution, and the communities involved in the implementation of this project to achieve Namibia's agenda to a sustainable tourism. Allow me to wish all of us. It is indeed my honor, the privilege to be part of this um, milestone this morning. The launch of the GIZ UNESCO project on the promoting sustainable tourism than the private sector engagement for inclusive community development in response to the COVID-19 crisis in Namibia. The main purpose of this project is to address some of the immediate socioeconomic impacts caused by COVID on heritage tourism in Namibia in order to accelerate the tourism recovery process to protect livelihoods and transform the sector to become more resilient and inclusive. The project will involve engaging the tourism private sector to create incentives to both sustainable practices by providing necessary training interventions and the capacity building for communities to benefit from the tourism value chains. Furthermore, the project will invest in the prevention, preservation rather, of our cultural heritage while creating short-term job opportunities by utilizing culture and heritage as source of resilience within the two UNESCO World Heritage Sites in our country, that is now Nam Sensi and the Twelve Fontaine. The Minister of Environment, Forestry and Tourism, in collaboration with the with other stakeholders, identified key interventions required to transform the tourism sector in response to COVID-19 crisis. Among others, managing the crisis and mitigating the social and economic impact on livelihoods, advancing innovation and the, the digitalization of the tourism ecosystem, fostering sustainability and inclusive green growth, and also strengthening coordination, partnership and the solidarity for social economic impact. Overall, this project will lay the foundation for a more strategic approach to promote sustainable tourism at World Heritage Nations while supporting social and cultural cohesion of surrounding communities. A little ceremonies, the project is expected to achieve the following national objectives. One, that's to promote sustainable tourism approach at the creation of um, short-term job opportunities for unemployed youth in the proximity of uh, Namibian Sea and also for Fontaine through the application of cash for work schemes for cultural heritage safeguarding and maintenance interventions in selected World Heritage properties. Three, enhanced training and capacity building for community level tourist guiding and the craft making sectors 
with a particular focus on women through the development of micro accreditation schemes. The project further aims to involve young women and men at the community level as direct, direct beneficiaries of the activities to the maximum extent possible and within culturally sensitive considerations. The gender response approach with the participation of women all levels of design, implementation and also evaluation. The connection between our heritage, culture and environment tourism are very important for our economic activities and livelihoods. It is the culture and the heritage that delight and the diversified people of the world. Our society needs to create stronger links between historical sites, monuments, natural attractions and indigenous people's way of life to investors, uh, which gives investors to heritage tourism. Culture and heritage sum up a community's belief, values and the shared behavior acquired as a result of living within a group and the defined geographical area. The sector and the responsible stakeholders should um, therefore ensure increased tourism development with full participation, management and ownership by indigenous people and without having negative impacts to local communities and ecosystems at large, which they are part of. Ladies and gentlemen, the project initiative or the implementation plan has commenced already and is expected to be completed by August 2022 and is jointly implemented by the Minister of Environment, Forest and Tourism, Minister of um, Education, Arts and Culture, National Heritage Council, Namibia Tourism Board, University of Namibia and Namibia University of Science and Technology, International University of Management, UNESCO and GAZ for technical and financial support. Let me take this opportunity to thank GIZ for the continuous support of sustainable initiatives within our communities and the national programs. I would also like to thank UNESCO on this initiative. It is therefore my wish that uh, continuous collaboration and cooperation on the preservation and sustainability of our precious natural heritage will then continue among our stakeholders. I therefore thank you for humble attention on this um, occasion. Thank you.